यशोदनंदन प्रजजन रंजना या मुनतेरा वनचारी या मुनतेरा वनचारी Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jayam Vishnupad Paramahansa Paribraja Kacharya Ashtatara Sata Sri Srimad, His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Iskon Founder Acharya, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Ananta Koti Vaishnavinda Ki, Nam Acharya, Srila Haridas Thakur Ki, Prem Shri Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Ki, Ananta Koti Vaishna Vrinda Ki, Namacharya Srila Haridasta Kaur Ki, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki, All Glories to the Assembled Devotees, All Glories to the Assembled Devotees, All Glories to the Assembled Devotees, All Glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga, All Glories to Srila Prabhupada. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So today is festival day in the Chaitanya Charitamrita it is described how Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would celebrate Diwali and Rath Rasiyatra 
and there's also a Dwadasi also in this month, which was a festival. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the devotees would all celebrate these festivals. We're not told exactly how they would celebrate, but we can understand Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mood that they would have a lot of kirtan and a lot of prasadam. It's a festival, right? So, today is the auspicious day of the appearance day of Nimbarka Acharya. Nimbarka Acharya is from the Sampradaya, which comes from the four Kumaras. When we go on Parikrama here in Navadvip, we go to Bilpakur, and in that area we hear about Nambarkacharya, how he was known by the Nimbaditya, and there were a number of Brahmanas who were worshipping Lord Shiva very nicely offering bilva leaves to Lord Shiva and they were very devoted and renounced and Lord Shiva appeared to one of the brahmanas and he told him that I'm greatly pleased by your devotion and he told him, he said, if you go through this forest where the bilva trees are he said the four kumaras are sitting there and they're engaged in meditation. You should go there and they will give you transcendental knowledge. So this Brahmana, uh, Nimbaditya, he searched through the forest and he found the four Kumaras. He saw them sitting there engaged in meditation. Four Kumaras, usually that's what they're doing, meditating. If you read the Brihad Bhagavatamrita, you can read about Gop Kumar going to Tapovan and meeting the Kumaras and they discuss about meditation. So, uh, Nimbaditya began to chant Hare Krishna mantra and when he chanted the Hare Krishna mantra then it broke the meditation of the four Kumaras and they were very happy to see a Vaishnava and they asked him, oh, who are you? What's wrong? Why have you come here? What do you want? So Nimbaditya explained how he had met Lord Shiva and Lord Shiva had directed him so the four Kumaras were very happy. They, had, they actually embraced Nimbaditya. And they told him that the Lord has already sent great devotees like Ramanuj, Madhva and uh, Vishnu Swami. He sent them into the world to preach bhakti. And of course Ramanuj, he has been ex he has taken the Sri Vaishnava line and Vishnu Swami taken the line from Lord Shiva and Madhvacharya from Lord Brahma and they told Nimbaditya that we are going to give you transcendental knowledge. We want you to be our representative and preach bhakti here on our behalf. So, Nimbaditya was, he took bath in the Ganga and came back. The four Kumaras instructed him in the knowledge. Their philosophy is called Dwait Advaita. Dwait Advaita. Right? Each of the four Acharyas, they have their particular philosophy, like 
Vashista Dvaita and the Ramanuja Sampradaya and Madhvacharya, he preaches uh, Shuddha Dvaita, right? And what about Vishnu Swami? What's their philosophy called? I forget. Anyway, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he has given us the essence from the four sampradayas in his Achintya Beda Beda Tattva. And Nimbarka, carrying on the line of the four Kumaras, he is, his philosophy, their teachings, very similar to our philosophy as well. And you see they're in the same holy places that we are. They're there in Vrindavan and Radhakun, Varsana, you'll see them. Because Nimbaditya, after he got the transcendental knowledge from the four Kumaras, he was here in, he was here in Navadvip, and he was doing, he was chanting the mantra, doing his bhajan, and Radha and Krishna appeared to him. So, of the four sampradayas, the Nimbarka sampradaya, they're the only ones who really give worship to Radha and Krishna apart from our line. So they have a lot of similarities with our own line, that they also worship Radha and Krishna. We don't see that in the Sri Vaishnavas, Ramanuja, you won't see Radha and Krishna. And Madhvacharyas, they, wor they worship just Krishna, Vishnu, but we're like Nimbarkas, they're very similar to our line. So Radha and Krishna appeared to him and they instructed him, they told Nimbarkacharya that in the Kali Yuga we will appear in a combined form and we will give the message of bhakti through the chanting of the holy name. So, they also told Nimbarka Acharya that you will also come in our pastimes. When I come, when we come in our combined form, at that time you will appear because you will take your birth in Kashmir and you'll be the, a very great pundit, a great learned scholar. Right? This is Keshava Kashmiri. And he was a very, very great pundit, very learned, very respected. And he, he became known as Digvijay. Dig, Digvijay means one who conquers everyone, everywhere. Wherever he traveled, he would debate and defeat people in argument. He was such a very great pundit and scholar. So he was traveling everywhere. And this is, it was told by Radha and Krishna, they told Nimbarka Acharya, you're going to come as Keshava Kashmiri. So what happened was, in the times of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this Keshava Kashmiri was traveling everywhere and he came to Navadvip. And at that time all the pundits who were there in Navadvip, they heard that Keshava Kashmiri was coming, they all ran away. Because they thought, if we have to meet him, surely he will defeat us. Because he's the greatest pundit. He was, he was actually a great devotee of Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning. So he had all the blessings of Mother Saraswati. Very brilliant in, in debate. And at that time, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, at that time he was known as Nimai Pandit. So he had his own school and he was teaching some students. And when Keshava Kashmiri came to Navadvip, Lord Nimai Pandit was sitting there on the bank of the Ganga discussing philosophical truths because Nimai Pandit was teaching logic, Nyaya, and uh, Keshava Kashmiri came in his procession 
with a big elephant and many people, the big entourage, they were all with him, all following him. And Nimai Pandit sitting there on the bank of the Ganga with his students giving class and discussing the Absolute Truth in Keshava Kashmiri Kaps. And the two met and Nimai Pandit, he's a young teenage man at the time. And he meets with Keshava Kashmiri and Keshava Kashmiri said, Oh yes, I've heard of you. I hear, I hear you're very clever in jugglery, jugglery of words. Right? That's what logic is all about, jugglery of words. I hear you're, you and your students are very good in juggling words, very good. But Lord Chaitanya, he, he's playing the, taking a very humble mood. He said, oh, I'm just a student. You are a great scholar. I'm nothing compared to you. You are you're really my worshipable. You're, you're, I'm not even worthy to be your disciple, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to him. <laughs> so, Keshava Kashmiri uh, glorify, talks, you know, that I hear you're, you're beginning your studies, you're just beginner. You're, yeah, you don't know very much yet, but still you're good in juggling word, jugglery of words. So very nice. So then the discussion goes on that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, why don't you compose some verses in glorification of Mother Ganga? Let us see. I want to taste your scholarship to see. I want to know just how great a scholar you are. Please show us. Please compose some verses in glorification of Mother Ganges. So this is just what Keshva Kashmiri would want. And he begins to recite. And he begins to recite poetry, verses, spontaneous. He can recite verses. Prabhupada had a disciple, very first disciple of Srila Prabhupada. Uh, he, was, he was also a very learned scholar. And he could also do that. When he would give a class, he would compose a verse, a, a poem, and he would speak just spontaneously, just off the cuff. He could speak poetry. He was Prabhupada's very first disciple. So this Keshava Kashmiri, he didn't just compose one verse, but he composed 100 verses. And it's said that he recited these poems just like the wind. And, you know, so fast, they just came right rolling off his tongue. So Lord Chaitanya, after hearing him recite all of these verses, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu congratulates him and said, Oh, you're really a great scholar. He said, Lord Chaitanya says to him, Nobody but you and Mother Saraswati could ever understand <laughs> what you've said. <laughs> that you're such, such a great scholar, you know. And, kind of mocking him, but at the same time glorifying him, you know. So, because he, he, Lord Chaitanya could see how proud this Keshava Kashmiri is. So Lord Chaitanya wants to fan that pride. Oh, you're so great. Only Mother Saraswati and you could ever understand your poetry. So, Lord Chaitanya then says to him, he said, Maybe you could just tell us about the, you could explain this, this verse to me. And tell me about the faults and the ornaments which are in this verse. So Keshava Kashmiri's faults, 
There are no faults in my poetry. My poems are perfect. There's, you know, what do you know about grammar? You're just a student. How can you find fault with my poetry? So then uh, Lord Chaitanya then recites one of the verses. And when Lord Chaitanya recites a verse, then uh, Keshava Kashmiri is really shocked that I recited these verses so quickly. How could you remember even one of them? And Lord Chaitanya says to him, well, just like Mother Saraswati has blessed you to be able to compose poetry, I must also have some blessings from her that I can remember your poetry. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Lord Chaitanya said, yeah, Shruti Dara. Shruti Dara means one who can hear and remember. And Prabhupada explains in the purport there to that section how before the Kali Yuga began, people all, everybody was sh Shruti Dara. They would simply hear and remember. There was no question of writing and publishing books. Everything was done by hearing. They just simply had to hear. And they could hear once and remember. But it's only in this Kali Yuga where our minds, our memories are so full and so hopeless. Chanchalahi mana Krishna. Mind is so restless, we cannot remember. We hear many times. But Lord Chaitanya, he had heard, he remembered, he recited the verse. He said, this verse, you know, maybe it was about the 60-something verse out of a hundred. So Keshava Kashmiri was amazed that, wow, he could remember the whole verse. Not only did he remember the verse, but he had analyzed it. And he had seen the faults and the ornaments in it. So Keshava Kashmiri, hearing Lord Chaitanya say that, well, you have the blessings to recite poetry. I must also be blessed. I can remember. So he said, well, okay, very good. You know. <laughs> so then tell me, what are the faults? Where is the fault in my poetry? Because Keshava Kashmiri, he's thinking everything is perfect. But then Lord Chaitanya went on to explain the different faults and the problems in the verse. And there was one particular point which was very bad. It said, uh, Bhavani Bhatri. That Bhavani means the wife of Lord Shiva and Bhatri means husband. So the husband of the wife of Lord Shiva means Lord Shiva's wife has another husband. Oh, Lord Shiva's wife has another husband. I mean, she has two husbands. It's a contradiction. So there was a, this fault, and that was one fault. There were other faults in uh, alliteration, position of different words was wrong. And Lord Chaitanya explained each and every fault to Keshava Kashmiri. And then he went on to explain all of the different ornaments which were also in the verse. And Lord Chaitanya then said to him, he said, Anyway, don't feel bad about it. He said, you know, even Kalidas and Jayadev Goswami, they have faults also in their poetry. And so, you know, it's not a, not a big deal, you know, don't worry about it. Hmm. Lord Chaitanya is very kind to him, you see, being very kind. Anyway, Chaitanya Charitamrita describes in detail all the different faults in the verses and then the ornaments. And the, the students of Lord Chaitanya, they're really enjoying it and they start to laugh at Keshava Kashmiri. That, see, <laughs> you've been defeated by our teacher. It's a young boy. And of course, Keshava Kashmiri is wondering, how is it possible that I could be defeated, I could be embarrassed in this way by such a young man, 
just a, a teenage man who is just like a student compared to me. Mother Saraswati must be angry with me. Lord Chaitanya says, Mother Saraswati is blessing me. She's blessed me that I can tell you the faults in this verse. So Keshava Kashmiri goes home that night and he prays to Mother Saraswati that I must have offended you, you're not pleased with me, tell me what I did wrong. And then Mother Saraswati appears and tells him that you have to understand that that young man who defeated you today, he is my worshipful Lord. He is the Supreme Lord of the universe. So Keshava Kashmiri comes the next morning and he surrenders to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu blesses him to become a devotee, to be a devotee and to give up his pride. Because pride, anybody who's proud, then they can never cultivate bhakti. We must give up false pride. Amanitvam adamvitvam, the first quality in the one person who's possessing transcendental knowledge. So Keshava Kashmiri gave up his pride and he went off and he eventually he took initiation in the Nambarka Sampradaya. So this is described there. And oh it was also mentioned that when Nimbaditya was there in the forest with Radha and Krishna they told him how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would take the main points from each of the four sampradayas because they told him that these different devotees are coming in each line and that Nimbarka, you will, you're representing the line from the four Kumaras. So from each of the four sampradayas, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took the main points and brought them into the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. And from the Nimbarka line, he took the point that the, that the gopis are the greatest devotees and the importance of taking shelter, out the full shelter of Srimati Radharani. That was the points which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took from the Nimbarka Sampradaya. From the Sri Vaishnavas, he took the importance of serving the devotees and Ananya Bhakti. Ananya Bhakti meaning devotional service without any desire for fruitive activities or liberation. And from Madhva, he took the complete defeatal a refutal of the Mayavadi philosophy and the importance of the worship of the deity as a divine personality. Other people, they do murti puja. They think the deity, they don't understand life as in the deity. They th simply think it's a statue and just simply some means to the perfection. But Madhvas, they actually worship the deity as it's Krishna himself. And then from Vishnu Swami, he took Raga Bhakti and uh, Bhava, the mood of spontaneous devotion for the Lord and complete dependence on the Lord. So this is the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took from each of the four sampradayas and brought them into our line in the Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, he also celebrated this Rasi Yatra. The Krishna performs Rasa Lila. There's two days in the calendar mentioned. One is the Sarat Purnima and this one at the end of Kartik. Now is, today is the full moon. Tonight you see the full moon and it's on this night. 
Krishna chose to dance the rasa. One rasa lila took place at Vamsivat and the other takes place over near Govardhan. So Srila Prabhupada gives us a lot of instruction about Rasyatra or Rasa Lila and he tells us this is for liberated souls. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would not discuss Rasyatra in public, not for public discussion. It's for liberated souls. We have to understand that uh, equal to top, talking about Rasyatra is to talk about the Lord's pastimes for the purpose of Shristi Tattva, for the purpose of creation, maintenance and destruction of the material world. We want to hear not only about the Lord's internal, past, internal pastimes there in the spiritual world, which is Rasa Lila, but we want to hear about the Lord's pastimes here and how he creates the material world. We want to hear about the Purusha avatars. So to know about the Purusha avatars, that is just as important for devotees like us. It's just as important for us to hear about the Lord and his function as a Purusha avatar than to hear about Rasa Lila. Because the Rasa Lila is described it's described in the tenth canto, right? The first two cantos, the first canto is subtitled Creation. We're hearing about the Lord's function and how he creates the material world. It's discussed a lot, especially in the third canto. Uh, so, the internal pastimes of the Lord, they come in the tenth canto. So we have to begin our meditation from the lotus feet of the Lord and not to jump up to the face of the Lord. People are very eager. Some people, they jump to the tenth canto and they especially go to the five chapters describing the Lord's Rasa Lila. But without first studying the nine can the, 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 the the preliminary nine cantos, we have no right to study the tenth canto. Indeed, Srila Prabhupada says, unless we have completely given up all sex indulgence, we should not go beyond the first two cantos of Srimad Bhagavatam. The first two cantos are there for us to get rid of all material desires, the, the gross desire for sex indulgence, if we are still carrying that in the mind, then we have no qualification to hear about the Lord's pastimes in the spiritual world. Lord Krishna comes to this world. He is Lila Purushottam. He comes to show us the pastimes of the spiritual world. So, it is meant for the liberated souls, the pure devotees. They can relish it. Foolish people, they cannot understand the Lord's pastimes like this. They are thinking them to be something that they can imitate. They think, oh, Krishna is dancing with the girls, I can also dance with the girls. They forget that Krishna is picking up Govardhan Hill. You want to imitate Krishna? Then pick up Govardhan Hill. Don't just only dance with the girls. People think that Krishna comes to simply enjoy sense gratification with the young ladies. Prabhupada gives the example, he says, just like a confectioner 
Every day he's making so many sweets and cakes. So, you know, if you have a job like that in a bakery or making confectionery, you don't like to eat it because you're working with it every day, you smell it and you, you know, you just have no desire to eat it anymore because every day you see it. And so Prabhupada explains in the same way, all of these gopis, all of these ladies, they're all expansions of the internal potency, the Ladini Shakti. All of the gopis are expansions of Srimati Radharani and they're the creation of the Lord. So the Lord naturally has no desire to enjoy them. It doesn't mean anything to him. But he performs his pastimes for, his, for the pleasure of his devotees. Srila Prabhupada explains that the Lord arranges this rasa lila to attract us away from the mundane concept of the association with the opposite sex. That we are thinking the pleasure of the opposite sex is the greatest enjoyment. But it leads to a lot of frustration. And that frustration is meant to lead us to something higher, to transcendence. Just like the frustration of the Pandavas in their dealing with the core of us, Arjuna's dilemma and his situation, should he fight, should he take part in this battle or not? Prabhupada said that frustration of Arjuna it led to Krishna speaking Bhagavad Gita. It led to something higher. And the same way the frustration of Parikshit Maharaj when he was cursed to die in seven days because he put the dead, dead snake around the neck of Shonaka, uh, Samika, and uh, Samika Rishi. And so he got cursed to die in seven days by the son of the Rishi. But that frustration of Parikshit Maharaj led to the speaking of Srimad Bhagavatam, led to the appearance of Sukadeva Goswami and the speaking of Srimad Bhagavatam. So the frustration which is there in material activities is the arrangement of the Lord to lead us to something higher, to the transcendental platform. So the same way Prabhupada explains that the frustration of mundane material life, particularly in the dealings with the opposite sex, it also opens the door into transcendence, that we can understand what is the pure activities, how there are actually transcendental activities performed on the highest platform and that is there in the Rasa Lila, the Rasa Yatra, Krishna's pastimes with the gopis. That there is nothing mundane, there is no material inebrities involved. It is completely pure and transcendental. So, Prabhupada therefore wrote about these things and described it for us. So, today is also the, they say on the calendar it says it's the marriage of Shalagram and Tosi. So, I asked about this from Janani Vas Prabhu and Pankajangari Prabhu, I asked them about it. And they told me that there's some controversy about that. <laughs> because uh, His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swami was not 
really in favor of this. And he said, you go and ask Puri Maharaj. Puri Maharaj was Prabhupada's god-brother. He lived to over a hundred years, I think, just down the road. And so, I think they went there and they talked to him and he explained to them, he said, this is not Gaudiya Vaishnava program. It's not really the Gaudiya Vaishnava to do this. It's taken, I think, from the Nambarkas. But it's not mentioned in Prabhupada's books. It's not there in Chaitanya Charita. We're not told Chaitanya Mahaprabhu observed it or anything. But it's something, you know, a little controversial. So I won't speak on it. Are there any questions? Yes, Prabhu. <laughs> yes, well, that's a big subject, Prabhu. You have to go into that. You know, <laughs> what is the difference? Prabhupada explains what is the similarity. You don't worry about the differences. What is the similarity? The, what do we have in common with these philosophies? All of these philosophies, they all say the, the Lord is supreme, one supreme, and we are all, the living entities are all his servants eternally even after liberation. That is what we have in common. That Ekala Ishvara Krishna or Sabrija. There is one supreme controller, all others are his servants. And that is eternal. Even after liberation in the spiritual world also, we will remain the servants of the Lord. We never become the Lord. Right? So that is the main point. There are subtle differences in the full, like, you know, maybe Ramanuja, you see, they worship, they should be worshipping Lord Rama, and they should be worshipping Narayan. They will say Narayan is supreme. We will say Krishna is supreme. You know, we give the supremacy to Krishna. We say, Ete uh, Chamsakalapum Sa Krishna Stu Bhagavan Swayam. And we give importance to Srimad Bhagavatam. Right? And they, you know, they're more, all the Puranas and all the Upanishads and Veda, <laughs> you know, they worship the Lord in Aishwarya. We worship the Lord more in Madhurya. But Prabhupada said, <laughs> in the mood of the Lord, we should worship the deities. He said, we should worship them in the mood of Lakshmi Narayan. So it's not really Madhurya. <laughs> Because Madhurya is simple, very simple. But Prabhupada said we should worship the Lord more in the mood of Lakshmi Narayan, in opulence. But that's different from Ramanujas, you know. They will have a lot of very valuable jewels and very precious stones and decorate the deity with gold and all kinds of very valuable things. Great opulence. And if you go in their procession, if you go there, when they have a festival, everybody's walking, they walk very majestically and recite mantras, you know. They don't dance like us, you know. We have a lot of, a lot of energy, you know. It's, it's a very different mood, you know. They're very sober and they very respectful and reverential. The mood of awe and reverence, because that's the mood of Vaikuntha. But we're following Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught everyone, Kali Yuga Dharm Harinam Sankirtan. Right? So everybody's chanting and dancing, and, the, and it's, you know, this is a very different mood. This, by, but by following Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we can come to know Radha and Krishna. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is the combination of Radha and Krishna. And if we just follow him, he will take us to Radha and Krishna. Yes, Prabhu? Uh, you mentioned that Lord Chaitanya celebrated this uh, Rashtrani festival, therefore we also celebrate it. Uh, I could relate to Goga and Puja, like they suck a mandalay, Goga and offer Goga. But for Rashtrani, was there any specifications and how it's... 
Yeah, well, what is the parallel? We know when Lord Krishna appeared, there do, he's dancing with the gopis, Ratha Yatra, and what's Lord Chaitanya doing when he comes with the devotees? They're having kirtan, like at Srivasangam. So we follow Lord Chaitanya's program, festivals. I mean, kirtan, a lot of kirtan, chanting and dancing, the ecstasy, taste the nectar of the holy name. Because this, this is non different from the Rasyatra, the Rasalila. It's the activity of the spiritual world. Chanting the holy name, performing kirtan. Very, very powerful. And the Lord Chaitanya came to give it to everyone. And so this is the mood. This is celebrating Rasyatra, having a big kirtan. Not different from Krishna dancing with the gopis. The gopis all came as Mahaprabhu's associates to perform kirtan. So in the Kali Yuga, they're all chanting and dancing. Because the, this is Kali Yuga, it's a different age. And so the program is kirtan. The Lord has come to give everybody the holy name. Let everybody chant and dance, taste the nectar of the holy name. Hmm? Prabhu? What with that last part? Hare Krishna. Maharaj, how we can translate this particular uh, line of uh, that as uh, Shankirtan is actually nothing but Ras Leela in, in book distribution and other services? Well, one devotee did write to Prabhupada, they, did, or they asked Prabhupada about book distribution that they said, are we correct to think that this is the mood of the gopis? That when we go for book distribution, that this is the mood of the gopis? And Prabhupada said, yes, nothing wrong with that. He said, that's correct. He said, because the gopis are always making arrangements for Radha to be with Krishna. And Srimati Radharani, she's always trying to make arrangements for gopis to be with Krishna. They're always trying to give the, Krishna, they want others to enjoy Krishna. They're not thinking, let me enjoy Krishna. They're not selfish. They're not thinking, I want to be with Krishna. They want to make arrangements for others to come to Krishna, to be with Krishna. So when we go for book distribution, when we go out on Sankirtan, we're trying to give Krishna, we want to introduce Krishna to others. So in that sense, the, the Sankirtan movement, the book program of book distribution is the mood of the gopis that we're trying to bring people into Krishna consciousness. We want to give Krishna, to share Krishna. Yeah, but when we chant japa, that's something we do really for our own purification. Kirtan, uh, there was another time, uh, there was a, a Back to Godhead magazine. It was way, way back, uh, very old Back to Godhead magazine. And in those days, Back to Godhead magazine was black and white, but there was a color picture. The front page was always color. So one issue of Back to Godhead, they had this very beautiful picture of all the devotees coming out from Boston. And at that time, the BBT was situated in Boston. So there was quite a few devotees there. You know, there was people like Prabhupada, Sanskrit editor, Prajumna Prabhu, and there were artists also, the different artists. So there was a good number of devotees there. I think Sasvarupa Maharaj, he was a temple president probably, and uh, other, there were many nice, they were all very young. And they were all very young, and they were all very pure. And, all the ladies had saris the same color. You know, they all had, I think, yellow sari, and the men were all dressed in sari and dhotis and, and nicely dressed, and the men had shaved heads, and they, were, they had this beautiful picture, and everybody just looked so effulgent. 
And they said to Prabhupada, they, they showed the picture to Prabhupada, they said, Prabhupada, everyone looks so effulgent. And Prabhupada said, yes, he said, this is Sankirtan. He said, with Sankirtan, everyone gets the mercy. He said, it's a machine gun. <laughs> right? Bring up the machine gun, you shoot everybody. So Sankirtan is like that. Everybody gets the mercy. Very powerful. But Japa, that's our own meditation on Krishna. Hmm? So that's uh, maybe what uh, Indra Prabhu is mentioning, right? That Sankirtan is giving the holy name, giving the mercy for everyone. John. And a basis is to Guru Maharaj. I want to ask, in Kali Yuga, different people are different. For example, some, someone, he, they can see and they can remember everything. But someone, even they see it repeatedly, they cannot remember anything and feeling a lot of suffering. What is the reason make them have different ability to remember Sastra? It is because of the physical reason or because of their karma? or how to solve this problem, would this infect us to go back to Godhead and go back home? Thank you. <laughs> well, we did say in the other yuga, previous yuga, people were Shruti Dara. We don't expect people in Kali Yuga to be Shruti Dara. That's why the Lord arranged that there could be books and printing press, you know, it's all given by him. Because he knows how our minds are very restless and unstable and very difficult for us to remember. We do see some people have better memories than others. It's, we could say it might be due to karma, it can also be due to just simply our own efforts, if we make a, a, an attempt, if we practice, just like I was hearing Narayani Mataji describe how she learned verses. She said every morning she would wake up, she would recite like 300 Sanskrit verses. You know, for, and she did this for a year or more. And so every morning, if you do it every morning, you start to remember. You know, I've also been trying to do things like that recently with the lockdown. Every morning we recite Brahma Samhita and we're doing also Gopi Geet and like that. And this way, if you do it every day, then you start to remember. So it's really practice. You have to really want to remember. If you make the effort constantly hearing and again and again, then it starts, we start to remember. That's why Prabhupada has us chant at least 16 rounds, minimum. And the more we chant, then the easier it is to remember Krishna. Okay, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Go back to Vrinda ki jai.